Hey there! Today we're going to have a look at a pen by this brand. I've reviewed a couple of these, the, I mean pens by this brand, I mean this one was sent to me by Aurora itself. Aurora is an Italian brand. Uh, I think they make very nice pens and uh, this is a model I have reviewed before but not in this particular finish. I do think this is a very interesting finish and it has a very interesting nib. So let's have a look. Aurora comes in nice boxes, cardboard outer box, uh, and in there is a fake leather box, which I think is very nice. It feels very luxurious, uh, nice large box, a lot of space in it, so that's, that's very nice. And you can take out the little pen bed, and in there, under there is little booklet with filling instructions, uh, uh, maintenance care, etc. in various languages. So, always nice. It's not full color, it's black and white, but it, it does have some useful information on nib grades and all that. So, that's very nice. The actual pen is the Optima. The Optima is a smaller pen. Uh, it's not a pocket pen, but it's not an, an enormous pen. And there are a whole bunch of Optimas. Uh, this happens to be the Burgundy Auraloid. They say it's uh, uh, antique celluloid. They call it Auraloid. A lot of companies have actually used to have specific names for their materials and it just sounds cool, I guess. Uh, so, for all intents and purposes, celluloid. Let's have a look at the pen. I'm going to cover the parts of the pen and tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then I'll do a writing sample. So, Finial, not much going on. Clip, simple clip with the ball. Center band that says Aurora, these are chrome trims. Uh, on the back there it says Italy, Greek key design. It's a very pretty material, I find. Very nice, has quite some depth to it. You have the barrel, piston turning knob. And at the bottom, <coughs> Sorry, I had to sneeze there. Um, <clears throat> just the turning on black chrome ring, etc. So, simple. Cap and screws, nice, simple, shiny oops, section. Little ink window. And then the nib. This happens to be an italic nib. S uh, a um, ebonite feed. I was going to say celluloid, but it's called eb of course, ebonite. Always nice, very good ink flow, nice characteristics. And um, I like it. <clears throat> Section tapers down, flares out a little bit, and here you have the nice ink window. Pen is empty. And the nice thing about these pistons, you can see there's a little sort of black thing in there, and the piston actually moves around that. Advantage of that is that the piston seal is hollow. Hold a little bit of extra ink. If you run out of ink, you can flick it, have some extra ink, emergency ink, as it were, which is always useful. Now, when I said it's a smaller pen, that's what I'm talking about. By no means a pocket pen, nor did I say it was, but it's smaller. You can post it, it posts very securely, comfortably, and then you have a nicely sized pen, I would say. Clip works. So, no issues there. What do I like about the pen? What do I not like about the pen? Well, I think, significant set, I think that the Optima is a very very nice model. Especially a nice model for people who have smaller to medium sized hands. Once your hands become larger, I think you're going to be kind of pushing it with a pen like this because it is small. But, of course, that's a very personal thing. What I will say is, I've used a few Optimas in my days, and most of them have very pretty materials. Aurora really does a nice job with these pens. There's quite a bunch of them that makes them very collectible, a number of limited editions, and this is pretty. It's a very nice material, very well polished, very shiny. Um, and what I like is they do an engraving on the cap. Let me just, uh, sorry, on the uh, on the barrel. Let me just see if I, the camera. It's very hard to make the camera pick that up. 
yeah, you have just the right light, as you can see a little bit there. And it's a, it's just a blind engraving, not not filled or anything, so you barely see it. Uh, it does say uh, Fabrica Italiana di Penna uh, Serbatoio. Um, probably butcher that. In any case, I like that they don't fill it because that would, I think, detract from the material a bit. So I like that. It's a solid pen, and that has been my experience with a lot of the Aurora pens. Piston filler works, draws up a nice amount of ink. That little save storage space for your extra ink in the piston seal works, it does work. Uh, nice range of nib options, they still offer stubs and italics. You may have to look around a little bit for them to see, to find a vendor that carries them. Some of them may be special order, but you can get them. And in a day and age where a lot of manufacturers have basically narrowed down the nib range to medium or fine and medium, sometimes fine, medium and broad, it's also nice that you can get stubs, italics, etc. So I think that's a very nice thing. I've also not really had any issues with Aurora. Uh, one of the things is their nibs are known to be a bit feedbacky, so if you like that, that super glossy smooth uh, sensation as you write, then these are probably not the pens for you. However, there are scores of people who do like that feedback. Uh, so, I think all of that is great. The final thing we should mention is the price. 445.50 US. So, it's uh, almost $450. Uh, that makes it a, a fairly expensive pen. Then again, if it's celluloid, that adds to the price. Gold nib adds usually to the price. Piston filler typically adds to the price. Uh, one thing I can say is, it is a well-made pen. It writes very well. Uh, it does everything it's supposed to do. Piston is smooth, so it does, given that this is an exemplary exemplar, it, it should reach you in perfect condition and very, very well made. And that is something that I, I, I really appreciate. So you pay a bit more, you also get more. You do get a very high quality pen. And that I really appreciate. So, we need to see how the pen writes. That's what's coming up next. On the website, sbrebrown.com will be measurements of the pen, as well as high-resolution pictures, taken as always by the inimitable gourmet pens. We'll see how it writes now. Thank you Aurora for sending me the pen, I appreciate it. I hope this was useful so far, and I'm glad to see you later. Bye bye. Okay, so here we go with the Optima, uh, sorry, the Aurora Optima of course in burgundy, oraloid, etc. Uh, this is the italic nib and the ink is Mont Blanc Corn Poppy Red. I'm just going to leave it at Poppy. Very interesting nib because this one is uncharacteristically smooth for Aurora nibs and I've noticed the same thing with their stub whereas their regular round grinds uh, are, are much more um, uh, more feedback. But fast writing, of course with these type of nibs you always have to make sure you don't misalign the nib and feed, uh, sorry, the nib to the paper because then you will get skips because the way the tipping is cut, but you see it's, it's very smooth. Interestingly enough, it's a fairly wet writer, that's not what I wanted to say. Interestingly enough, for an italic I find it not extremely sharp in the corner. Some of them are so sharp that they actually cut into the paper. I don't think that happens here. But you do get a nice amount of line variation. Um, here I actually have an Aurora 88 which has their stub nib which actually seems to have more line variation than the italic does. And it's also a little bit more feedbacky than this is, so very interesting. Um, pressure is going to give you even more line variation, but of course because of the shape of the nib tip you already get that line variation. Reverse writing, unlike with the stub in this nib, is actually possible, although very dry, but you do get a finer nib. So there you have it. A kind thank you to Aurora for sending me this pen. I really appreciate it. I hope this was useful and um, I'll gladly see you later.